What is up guys, welcome back to another Fallout video, and today I'm bringing you another episode of our Top 5 Mod series, and today is episode 21, and it's actually going to be on the PC version of Fallout. Now, I know this is pretty different, normally it's on PS4, but I kind of want to do like an alternating type thing now, um, like one week I'll do PC, and the next week I'll do PS4, so tell me what you guys think of that idea, um, but if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you like, subscribe, let's get right into it. I with my two fist divine, but I'm going on. Alright guys, so the first mod we have is the Sim Settlements mod by King Gath, and I know this mod has been out for a while, but I still felt like I should add it in anyway. Basically what this mod does is it adds in a um, ability for your settlers to actually interact more inside of your settlements, they kind of do their own thing. Whenever they are spawned into your settlement, they will go ahead and take any jobs that are not filled yet, so let's say you have a whole bunch of food things that are not actually assigned to a certain settler yet, they will go ahead and assign themselves to that uh, certain job, and then perform that job out to their abilities. Um, without you actually having to tell them to. They also have the ability to build their own farms, shops, and things like that. It also allows you to build zone objects that tells the settlers what type of buildings to create in different areas of your settlement, and they will do so. also includes a progressive system where more interesting settlers need a system and rewards to help settlements better more. In the description of this mod, it gives a really big reason why he made this, and one that I agree with as well. He says that... One of the biggest problems with Fallout 4 is just the disconnectment with the settlement system and feels from the rest of the game, which I honestly agree with too. I believe that they kind of just like, they could have done so much more with the actual settlers and things like that, added more depth into them, but they kind of just left them really boring and they're kind of just like NPCs, like um, really boring things like that that don't really have personalities or things like that. He said, it also feels bizarre that you have to mi micromanage all these people and personally plant seeds and decide where people sleep and things like that. You're their leader, not their mother. <laughs> You're supplying these people with security and tons of resources. Why can't they kick out and help out with the building up the city? In the current version, this mod adds the start of a vision that is allowing you to place down zones. Um, and that's going to basically make your settlers create buildings of the appropriate type in that zone. And it includes a series of systems to help bring your settlers to life and to make them more dynamic and more interesting to engage with. Buildings are chosen at random and filled with random things depending on how you zoned in the area. Um, and using this basic types of agricultural farms and commercial stores and industrial factories and residential homes, um, you can create a basic outline of your settlements using the workshop system and settlers will handle the rest. And there's actually a pretty large selections of buildings and he says there's even more coming on the way. And after the actual building is built, it says that every building has multiple levels of upgrades that can be unlocked over time to keep you coming back to re-explore your own settlements and find out what's changed. So what starts out as a little house can actually turn into a multi-level house by the end of it. So overall, this is a super, super cool mod that um, does not require any DLC. It's pretty much compatible with every other mod that's going to keep your... Um, Settlements more like real life almost as type like that. They kind of do their own thing and kind of stick to their own past and do things for you now. So overall, super good mod. I definitely recommend it. Our next mod we have is the improved map with visible roads mod by MM137. And what this does, it actually enhances your pit boy, so you're going to have more detail of roads and things like that around here. And it also enhances roads, train tracks, and topography of the map. So you're going to be able to have a more detailed version of your map on your pit boy also adds in distinct water lines and corrected placement of map markers along with balanced brightness for the glowing sea and includes Far Harbor but does not require it so even if you do have the Far Harbor DLC it's going to work for that but you're not going to necessarily need it for this mod to work now this is just one of those little mods you get into the game that's not really going to affect your actual gameplay too much but it's gonna be really really helpful now what I didn't like about the normal pit boys that's not gonna show the roads at all and this kinda of adds that in which I really do like and it doesn't require any mods it also is pretty much compatible with every single mod in the game and it's also does not require any DLC so overall super small mod but also something really really good to add into your game. The next mod we have is the NCR Veteran Ranger Armor mod for the PC and it's by Unoctium and what this mod does it adds in a heavy modifiable iconic armor straight from the west coast and the most elite of the formidable NCR Rangers and um, basically adds that into the game so you can wear it yourself. Now to actually get this armor set, just go into Diamond City and it'll be in Kellogg's house. Now if you don't know where Kellogg's house is, just follow me, um, just go past the actual markets and things like that, walk up these stairs leading to these like little like apartment type things, and this house will be at the very end of this like little catwalk. And if you haven't been there yet, I actually had to lockpick it and um, do things like that, but most of you guys probably already beat the campaign and um, 
Aksha unlocked it. But once you guys are actually in, it's going to be in his little secret room, and it's going to be by his safe. So when you're in his secret room, it's going to be to your right in a safe, and it is a novice safe, so anyone can unlock it as long as you have some bobby pins. But if you're like me, you kind of suck at lockpicking, and you struggle with it anyway. Once you're in the safe, the armor is going to be right there in a helmet, a mask, and a ranger coat. So go ahead and take all of them. For some reason, you get two ranger helmets. I'm not sure if that was a little glitch for me, but um, you get two of them for some reason. But you can, then you can go ahead and equip them on, and actually, these armor pieces do a considerable amount of uh, protection against you, against like radiation and energy and things like that, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and it looks also super, super nice, and they are actually heavily modifiable at a armor workbench. The helmet does a damage resistance of 17 and an energy resistance of an 8. The mask also does 3 damage resistance and radiation resistance of 30, and this is where the big numbers come in. The coat does a 56 um, energy resistance, um, damage resistance though goes to 80, and the radiation resistance goes to 10, so overall this armor is not that bad. And like I was saying before, if you want to take them to a armor workbench, you can actually upgrade a whole bunch of these. And um, But they can get a little bit pricey if you go to like the really advanced upgrades for it. But overall, super, super good. And also, if you guys do want to see some more features of the mod itself, the actual owner of the mod that created it added a link into the bio of his mod section where you can actually see the like more in-depth features of this mod. So overall, pretty good mod in terms of um, actual armor. And it's probably one of my favorite ones so far, but I've been playing on PC mods for that long. But um, does not require any other mods or DLC or anything like that, so it's going to be compatible with everything. So um, overall, super, super good mod, and I definitely recommend putting it in your load order. Our next mod we have is the AK-74M Assault Rifle for the PC, and this is by HyperX. Now, um, I'm going to briefly go over this one just because I made a completely um, whole video on it in uh, last week's video. But um, not very many people watched it, I'm pretty sure, and then his sub box and things like that. So not very many people actually saw So I figured out in here because these always get more views, so I figured um, you guys would want to see it. So basically what this does, it mods in a actual AK-74M with custom animation, custom sounds, and um, a variable modification system. You can also get different variants of this actual weapon from um, the AK-S74U and the Frontliner 404. Now the AKS-74U is a special and is also hidden on an island where imported transported goods are stacked and waited to be collected, which is AKA Spectacle Island. The Frontliner 404 is shines yellow and hardened in carbon and is surrounded by a deadly glowing environment, AKA the glowing sea. And that one I actually not have found yet, but um, overall, the super they're super super cool. And the one I'm using right here, you can actually just get straight from Arturo at Diamond City. And um, I just think they're cool because they're a completely new weapon. They're not like reskinned other weapons. You just had everything custom. These weapons are also heavily modifiable, and um, you can actually upgrade everything basically from the gun in a actual weapon workbench, from the magazine to the stock to the barrel, everything like that. Um, and you just added in a whole bunch of new things for this mod. And there's also a whole bunch of custom sights that aren't actually. Um, in the stock game, so I just think it's really cool how much he actually added into this game. I would consider this to be kind of similar to the Splatter Cannon, but also kind of better than the Splatter Cannon. Also, at the um, Weapons Workbench, you can actually upgrade it to increase the damage percent-wise, and um, it goes all the way up to 150% extra damage, but I don't know, I would probably keep it at around 60% extra damage, just because if you put it at a completely um, insane, like... 150% uh, damage, it's just gonna make everything super OP, and you're not gonna, like, you're just gonna kill everything in one shot, so to keep kind of, like, a skill, um, to the game, I wanted to keep it around around 60 to 40, so maybe 80 if you wanna be really cool, but, um, I keep it around there. But overall, a really, really cool mod that he added in, that's, like, completely new stuff, which I really did enjoy. Now, this mod does not require any DLC or anything like that, and also, it's going to be compatible with every mod in your, um, load order, and it shouldn't affect anything. So, overall, super, super good mod, definitely recommend it. Our final mod we have is the Snipers of the Commonwealth mod by Fulgore2727. Now, this is actually a modder that is also very common on the PS4 version. I've used some of his mods before, and he's actually a really, really good modder. Now, what this mod does, it basically adds in more than 150 enemy snipers on top of buildings, broken bridges, or guarding some locations. They have good accuracy and perception. Now, the variety of these um, actual snipers can vary from each location to location, but the first one I found was actually in Concord by the church, um, which was a raider sniper. Now, what the raider sniper does, it is equipped with pipe snipers and can be found in regions dominated by raiders, such as Lexington, Converja, for example, and other things like that. 
You can also find the Gunner Sniper, which is equipped with combat rifles or assault rifles. They can be found in regions dominated by gunners, such as the Gunner's Plaza, for example. He put a fun fact in there, he said, I was testing to see if the gunners can walk on broken bridges. They can, but you know the bridges has to have a lot of big holes, so accidents happen as well. So, um, sometimes you can find your gunners on the ground from falling damage and stuff like that. You can also find survivor snipers, and this is a new group of enemies. Um, basically, they are just trying to survive and don't trust anyone besides his friends. Um, they can be found in places that have loot, houses, etc. There's also the Brotherhood of Steel sniper. Um, they prefer not to use power armor. They are very stealthy and always walk with a buddy, and they can be found patrolling areas with infestations of feral ghouls and super mutants. Next, there is the Zero Sniper, which is a unique NPC, not hostile, only the player can kill him, Borderlands 2 reference for anyone who played that. Was the perfect killing machine of the Institute, he is fast and lethal. He can use his ability of deception to make him invisible for a moment. He escapes from their captivity and now he is hunting every single synth. He has, Lud he has Ludia, a legendary sniper rifle that shoots two bullets and zero sword, a weapon that does more damage the more you attack the same target. There's also Zero One, which is a unique NPC. Um, a hostile only player can kill him again. He's a prototype um, created to hunt down the original Zero. He isn't perfect, but the same skills of Zero. He has Volcano, a legendary sniper that deals fire damage, and Zero, a sword um, that can hurt the legs of the enemy. There's Zero Two. He has Skull Smasher, a powerful legendary sniper that deals more damage than the other snipers, and Zero Sword, a weapon that deals more damage as the night grows longer and less damage during the day. There's Zero Three after that, and he has a Long Nail, a legendary sniper that ignores parts of enemy defense, and Zero Three Sword, a weapon that can stagger. Next, there is Zero Four. He has the Omni Cannon, a legendary sniper that deals explosive damage, and Zero Four Sword, a weapon that does more damage to humans. Next, there is Zero Five, and he is, has the Invader, a legendary sniper that deals more damage as the night grows longer and less damage during the day. Same as Zero One. And this mod is compatible with every single mod in the game, and also it does not require any DLC. So that is pretty much all the mods I have for you today, guys. Also, if you do want me to like show you guys some Nexus mods, like MXR Mod does, he does a whole bunch of those Nexus mod things. Um, I'm willing to do those. I keep, I've been trying to add them into my game, but I've been having issues with the like files and stuff like that, like. It'll add in part of the file, but it won't end in like the full file. So if I put in like a gun mod, it'll like add in the gun animations and everything like that, just not the actual like skin of the gun, which is kind of weird. So I would try to fix that if you guys actually do want Nexus mods. They like add in a whole bunch of actual really cool things, such as custom weapons like the AK-74M, just better. Um, and I'm willing to do that if you guys want to see it. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.